Hi folks, I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine and this is our June 2014 print issue Small Shop Journal Project. It's a floor standing mirror made out of some extraordinary tiger maple. Now in the print article I didn't have an opportunity to go through the finishing process but I think it's important because I wanted to capitalize on this unique figure as much as possible. So I'd like to use this video as an opportunity to walk you through the finishing process in case you want to do the same thing on your mirror or another figured maple project on your to-do list. Now the first step of the finishing process for this mirror involved a lot of careful prep work. I wanted all the project parts to be as smooth as possible so the light would penetrate down deeply into the wood fibers and start to create that beautiful shimmery aspect that's characteristic of tiger maple. So step one was a lot of sanding. I power sanded up through 150 grit and then switched over to a rubber sanding block to do 180 grit, 220 grit, all the way up to 320 grit. Now that's a higher grit than I would normally use on a project that's just getting a conventional clear finish. But the finer the scratch pattern, the better the light passes through. It's similar to looking through a scratched window or a clear window. The clearer the glass, the more light comes through, the more scratches and the harder it is to see. So step one was a lot of sanding. My next goal was to color the wood. As you can see in this sample that I'll use for the video, this is a piece of figured maple without finish on it and in its bare form it's pretty bland. I also wanted to match this mirror to another project I had made previously for the magazine. It's a bedroom end table. And here's the drawer from that end table. At the time I used an amber shellac, but I didn't want to go with amber shellac this time. So to color the mirror, I used a custom mixed aniline dye. It's a water-based aniline dye. I used three different colors an amber yellow, a medium brown, and some orange to get this deep amber color. And I think when you put the two together, the color match worked out pretty well. Now once I had all my work pieces sanded, there was one intermediate step I still had to do before I could apply that water-based dye. And that was to raise the grain on all the work pieces. Easy way to do that is just to wipe them all down with some clean water. And I usually use distilled water. Then let that dry and it'll raise up all the torn fibers that happen during the sanding process. Then you can just knock those off with some 400 grit paper. The reason for doing that now as opposed to after you put the dye on is the water in the dye won't be able to raise up any more torn fibers that you'd have to sand off once the dye is in place and that would take some of the color off the wood. So do it now before you step to the dye stage. Now once I was done with the grain raising process, it was finally time to color my mirror parts. And that's where aniline dye is the perfect coloring agent for this project. That's because whether you use it as a premixed solution or a dry powder, aniline dye is color formulated at the molecular level. So it can soak deep down into the dense closed pores of hard maple like this and color these tiger stripes as well as the field areas in one step. Now that's just not something you can do with an oil-based pigment stain. If you were to flood on pigment stain and then wipe off the excess, you'd wipe off most of the color too because the pigment particles are too large to absorb down into this wood in the same way that a dye can. Another advantage to using aniline dye is that whether it's a powder or a liquid, they're completely compatible with one another they come in all the primary colors as well as many shades. So you can literally mix and match dyes to make exactly the color you want no matter what it is. So I could have colored this mirror blue or purple or cranberry for that matter and I could have achieved that color with aniline dyes. Now using dyes is very simple. You'll need the appropriate solvent for the dye and that's either water or alcohol and then you simply add some drops of dye to the solvent and mix it up. Now the more dye you add, the deeper and darker the color becomes, so it's usually a good idea to start with less dye and add more until you get the color that you want. And of course you should always make up a test board when you're trying to find a finish color. This is the one that I used for the project. I started off with just amber yellow dye and that wasn't anywhere close to what I wanted. 
So I added some medium brown dye to my amber solution and that got me here but it still wasn't close enough to my end table amber that I was going for. That's when I added some orange dye powder and that got me here and then a little more orange powder got me to the final color for this project. Now another thing to keep in mind when you're using aniline dyes is if you're mixing up a custom color like I have here make up more dye solution rather than less. You don't want to get halfway through dyeing this project and run out of color because it's really tough to get that exact same color again. Now applying aniline dye is really easy. Just flood it onto the wood as you would any other stain. Keeping a wet edge as much as possible. Flood, on, flood it on good and liberally. Make sure that you get a nice even coat. And then wipe off the excess after it's had a chance to soak in a bit. And now you can see that tiger stripe really starting to come to life. Once the dye dries, you're ready for the second big step of the finishing process, and that is to raise that shimmery luster that's so desirable with tiger maple. And there's almost no better way to do that than with oil. This is Danish oil. It's basically a mixture of boiled linseed oil and varnish. Now, oil will penetrate down deeply into the wood fiber and help make the figure more translucent. But it also serves a second function. Neither the oil nor the varnish is a solvent for the dye. It's not alcohol and it's not water. So there's no danger of resuspending the dye and smearing it around when you apply it. It actually will act like a sealer for the dye on the wood. To apply the oil, lay down a heavy coat, scrubbing it in with a fine abrasive pad, and then give the oil about 10 to 15 minutes to soak in. You want to really have the oil absorb deeply into the wood fibers. If you see any dry spots appearing, add more oil. And after about 15 minutes, wipe off the excess. So give the Danish oil overnight to dry, and then you're all set for the third and final step of this finishing process, and that is to add a protective top coat. You could stick with Danish oil and apply more coats, or you could switch to an oil-based varnish, you could use shellac, or you could go with lacquer as I did. I applied six coats of a satin sheen spray-on lacquer. It builds to a nice flat film, it dries super fast, and it leaves a soapy smooth feel on the wood that I really like. Now this is just one approach to finishing one project, but if you want lots of great information on general finishing, check out Michael Dresner's new DVD, The Way to Woodwork, Step-by-Step -step to a Perfect Finish. You can find it in our online store at woodworkersjournal.com or at rockler.com. So good luck with your mirror project and all your finishing efforts, and thanks for watching. Thank you.